Have you ever had thick, chewy, hearty udon noodles that you can just slip right in? If you haven't, you need to watch this video because I'm going to show you exactly how to do that at home. G'day guys, how's it going? Welcome back to Sam Sam Kitchen. My name is Sam Lin. I am just a home cook who's really passionate about sustainability and more importantly, save money by making things at home and hopefully I can help you guys through my videos, do the same in your own kitchen as well. Before we get into the recipe, this week's video is sponsored by absolutely no one. <laughs> That's right. I am just a teeny tiny channel who's just trying to make my way through through my cooking, through my budgeting to be able to convert my ideas through a wider audience and every single engagement that you guys can help with, whether it's liking the video, sharing with people who you think can really, really benefit from the content, or even just leaving a comment down below saying that, hey, you can do this better, yada, yada, yada. I would really, really appreciate every single engagement that you guys can provide. So now that's out of the way, this week's video, we are going to be talking about udongs. If you've not had udongs, those are the really, really thick noodles that you can find in some nice and hearty broth to go alongside with some tempura or even just some stir fry udongs. They're chewy, they're luxurious, and it's super, super hearty. We are in lockdown right now. It's been a week and really the last thing to do is for me to go out of my way and try to navigate through those Asian grocery stores and just find some average packaged udongs that don't even taste that good. So I thought, why not just make it ourselves at home? So hence today's video, the end result is really, really awesome. And the process is actually super, super simple. It's really just noodle dough with some additional salt, and then we just knead the crap out of it to encourage the gluten formation. Enough of my talking and let's get cooking. So to make udon noodles, the ingredient list is actually super straightforward and similar to any noodle doughs that we've made in the past. Starting off, we need some plain flour. Second of all, we need some water. Ordinary tap water will do the trick. Different from normal noodles, udon will require a high salt content to encourage the gluten formation. And that's all. Three ingredients to make some deliciously chewy noodle. It will take some elbow grease, but nothing too crazy, so don't worry. We'll put these aside and get started. With the udon recipe, we are going to be strict with our ratios and stick to a 1 to 0.45 to 0.05 ratio, or in other words, 1 to 45% to 5%, which is flour to water to salt. Knowing the ratio will allow us to scale up or down very easily, and you just can't do that when measuring with cups or spoons. For three portions of noodles, we'll want 300 grams of flour. Instead of adding water straight to the dough, we're going to measure out our salt and water to make our salty water solution to make sure that all of the salt is mixed through really, really well. Grab a container of your choice. For 300 grams of flour, we want 5% of the weight, which is 15 grams of salt. Next, 45% of 300 grams in water, which is 135 grams. Give it a good stir and make sure that all of the salt is properly dissolved in our liquid. The role that salt plays here is not only for seasoning, but also to strengthen the dough and build out a really strong gluten structure within our noodle dough. Quite a contrast to normal noodles that most noodle doughs use boiling water to discourage gluten formation to keep things soft and easy to work with. For udongs, we're doing it a tough way, but trust me, it's worth it. Once all of the salt's dissolved, next thing, is to mix all of our ingredients together and start kneading the dough. It's going to be quite a tough dough given the low hydration, but don't panic, just trust in the process. No fancy technique is needed when it comes to combining the ingredients. Get your hand in as it is quite a dry dough and nothing will stick to your hand or finger, I promise. After mixing for about two minutes, 
Your dough should start looking shaggy with lots of clumps and not smooth at all. Yep, it's totally normal. Just trust in the process. Once there's no liquid present in the bowl, I poured everything out on the bench so it's easier to work with. You can use a main dough to wipe off all of the flour that is still left in the bowl. Once all is transferred onto the bench, start kneading and incorporate all of the loose flour that is still left on the bench. When kneading tough doughs like this, I apply my body weight onto a straight arm and then into the dough. This way, it saves me a lot of effort and makes sure that I don't injure myself in the process. I see lots of udon recipes suggesting to knead the dough by stepping on them with the feet. I, I'm not sure how I feel about that. So once our dough has roughly come together and all flour has fully incorporated, we can stop and move on to the next stage. Note that at this stage, it's totally normal that the dough is still kind of rough and ugly like, like my face. We're going, we're going to let the dough rest. You can either pop it in the plastic bag and somehow just create more waste or leave it on the bench and just cover it so the dough doesn't dry out. Yep, I'm totally judging here. Now we're going to let the dough rest for 20 minutes. 20 minutes up and we're back to the dough. You can do a little bit of a fingering test to check if the gluten is rested. If you push the dough and it doesn't bounce back, that is a pretty chillax dough. Next thing to do is we're going to knead the dough for a good 5 minutes to encourage gluten formation. Same kneading technique and just leverage off your body weight. After about 5 minutes, the dough should be much smoother than earlier. That is a good sign that our flour and water is much better combined within the dough now. We'll let it rest for another 20 minutes and just do it all over again and knead until you can feel a good gift within the dough. That is our gluten fighting back. Once done, we'll let it rest for another 20. So after the initial kneading and two additional knead and rests to encourage gluten formation, our dough should be nice and strong now. Coming back to it, now it's time to roll it out. Grab a rolling pin and we will start with some pressing to better stretch out our dough. Pressing the dough does a better job in this situation compared to rolling motions, with which the dough tends to bounce back a little bit more. Rotate your dough in a few orientations and press it down accordingly. Flour the dough if it starts to stick, and just to make it easier to work with in general. Now just go to town and roll the dough out to about a quarter centimeter in thickness. You can flour the dough and roll it up with your rolling pin to help stretch it out. Make sure to apply some flour so the dough doesn't stick together. If you have a pretty average rolling pin like the one I have, it might be easier to cut the dough up in portions so you can make sure you get even thickness. Here, I decided to cut my dough into three and get three portions at 150 grams each. I then roll the portion up dough and make sure that I get the right thickness I want. Also laminated the dough a couple of times to turn it into a rectangular for even length. If you do have a pasta machine at home, it works like magic. Roll the dough out with a roller. Always start with the lower setting and work your way up. For udon, I recommend a 3 to 4 setting kind of thickness. Now we've got our dough all rolled out into a quarter centimeter thickness. The only thing left to do is to cut them up and turn them into nudes. Turn your dough vertically with the long side perpendicular to you. You want to fold it the short side so you get nice and long udongs. Flour your dough on both sides to make sure that they don't stick when you fold them. Make sure you also flour your knife to prevent stickiness as well. Once done, cut your dough into half a centimeter wide noodles. There's something very special about hand cutting noodles. It's so mesmerizing. Once all cut up, grab one end of the noodles and spread them out. Grab the bunch from the middle and that is a very good looking portion right there. If your pasta machine has a fettuccine attachment, it's a pretty good width for udon noodles so you can totally use that. With 300 grams of flour and 135 grams of water, I'm able to get 3 portions of noodles and tell you what, they are more authentic than any of the store bought ones you can find out there. 
For dinner, I made some stir-fried udon with veggies. I cut up some carrots and julienned along with leafy greens like silver beads. I also added some capsicum for good measure and some onion for some sweetness. Stir fries are so forgiving, so just work with whatever you have. These udon noodles take about 10 minutes to cook, so I started off with some boiling water and have the noodles cooking while I deal with the veggies. Give it a quick stir to make sure they don't stick. In a pan, add in some neutral tasting oil, in our onion. Add in our carrots and give it a good stir. The rest of the veggies in. For the udon, as we're getting closer to it getting cooked, prep up some cold water. That is to wash off the starch from the udon so they retain the chewy texture. Once the udons are cooked, transfer them out into the cold water bowl and give it a good wash. You can see the water turning cloudy with the washed off starch. In with our udon. You can add in some additional water so the udon stay nice and moist. Season it with some soy sauce, some sugar and a pinch of salt. Combine everything in the pot and let the flavour interact with each other. Finish with some sesame oil for flavour and glossiness and that is some delicious stir fry udon right there. The cost breakdown is as below. 300 grams of flour at $1 a kilo equals to 30 cents. 15 grams of salt at 10 cents per 100 grams equals to 1.5 cents. Altogether, 31.5 cents give us 3 portions of udon which works out to be 10.5 cents per portion. That is 10 times cheaper than the crappy store bought ones that don't even taste that good. Alright and there we have it. That's how udon done. It's a little bit of effort in terms of kneading and then resting the dough with the 20 minutes intervals. But personally, I think it's really, really worth it to create that gluten and then that chilliness within our dough. It's not comparable to any of the white noodles that you can buy on the market. It's also really versatile. You can make udon noodle soup. You can make some tempura with it. You can do like a stir fry like this. It's really, really good. One of my personal favorites. I'm going to dig in and just let you know how it is. The noodle itself takes on so much flavor and then the chilliness, the bounce within the noodle just works so well with all of the veggies that we put in there. It's a good contrast in terms of flavor town and fresh veggies, the crunchiness and then the lightness. It's really, really good. Actually, I'm going to add some chili in. That's what was missing. A little bit of chili cake just to complete the meal. Honestly, I can have this every night. It's so much better compared to the store-bought ones. You know, the $1, $2 packets that you can get from Asian groceries. They are convenient, but every time I cook them, they just come out so mushy. And then, not to mention the plastic wrapping that comes with it, that's just extra waste. When you can make this for so much cheaper and then also so much tastier, I personally would offer this anytime, any day. And then with the made up udon, we can also just pop it in the freezer, have the water boiling, bring out of the freezer, chuck it in, it's all ready to go. All right, I'm going to get back to my dinner. Thank you so much for watching. If you have been enjoying the video, make sure you give it a like down here and then consider subscribing. I put out a new video on a weekly basis. Thank you so much. I will see you in the next one.